Hey guys, Vince here at the Storage View Northeast Headquarters. Today we are looking at this. This is the QNAP TBS H574TX. This is a five bay all flash based NAS from QNAP. It's designed with media and entertainment professionals in mind like myself. And it's got a couple cool features to uh, facilitate that. The most standout one is dual Thunderbolt 4 ports, which is really nice. It's also got Intel XE graphics for transcoding with Intel QuickSync, if they still call it that. It's also got the peculiar feature of not using kind of the format of flash drives you'd expect. It does support M.2 drives and QNAP does include M.2 adapters out of the box, but it supports EDSFF, in this case E1.S drives, which is very cool to see, gives it a little bit more longevity and more options for really high-end storage that has a lot of endurance. The other benefit of that too is E1.S drives can be higher capacity. I think 16 terabytes is the highest they go right now. Uh, and I expect that to be higher in the future where M.2 is only about eight terabytes right now, I believe, at least in terms of stuff that's readily available. And one of the nice things to look forward to anyway is in the future, I'm sure there will be plenty of businesses that have their regular turnover and you will see the market soon flooded with hundreds and hundreds of perfectly good enterprise grade storage on eBay for pretty cheap. This NAS comes in two varieties. It comes in a Intel Core i3 version and an Intel Core i5 version. The version we have here today is the i5 version, specifically the Core i5 1340PE with four performance cores and eight efficiency cores. The i3 version comes with 12 gigs of RAM. This i5 version comes with 16 gigs of RAM. It is unfortunately not expandable, uh, but I'll give them a pass for a small form factor device like this. Uh, speaking of, it is very compact. And that's sort of one of its selling points as well, as far as, you know, appealing to media and entertainment professionals. The idea being is you can bring this to set, you can offload and transcode your footage straight onto here and then bring it back to a post house and either connect it to their network over the built-in 10 gig NIC or connect it to whatever system they're using over Thunderbolt as well. One of the workflows I really like is hooking this up to another QNAP Thunderbolt NAS. I happen to have one already and hooking this up over a Thunderbolt cable is great. Then you can set up backups to be automated in QNAP software. I got like two gigabytes a second, which is great to have, you know, your working drive with flash storage and offloaded to more bulk storage to have it readily available for anybody else. Or when, if you got to take this drive back to set, you'll have the data backed up somewhere else. So now that we've talked about some of the workflows and kind of an overview on the specification, let's take a look around this guy. So this is a handsome looking little device we got here. Uh, it's pretty small which is nice for portability. Um, this front panel here comes off, it's just magnets, which is very nice. Uh, there is a lock on the side if you wanna make sure this doesn't fall off. Uh, there's no like key locked or anything, so there's no physical security if that's a thing you're concerned about. Fortunately, because this takes E1.S drives, and if you're using E1.S drives, uh, you kind of have security through obscurity because unless they have another one of these or uh, enterprise server with E1.S slots, uh, they're not going to be able to read this data. However, if you are using the included M1 adapters, well, that's a different story. You can, of course, uh, encrypt. You can, of course, encrypt these drives. Um, and of course, the NAS itself has uh, login credentials. On the front of the device, we got those five drive bays. We've got our Thunderbolt 4 port up here. We have a USB 3.2 port, a button to automatically offload, which can be configured in the OS. We have an indicator light for that offload, an indicator light for information, and the power button. On the bottom is the intake and some rubber feet. On the top is just the QNAP logo. And around back, We've got our three exhaust ports. We've got reset button, DC barrel jack, 10 gig port, two and a half gig, which is very nice to see, HDMI, and our other Thunderbolt port. And then we've also got two more USBs back here. One is just 2.0, so if you have peripherals, uh, that's where you'd put them. And that other one is USB 3.2. And speaking of power, this is the included power supply. It's actually pretty small, standard Mickey Mouse style plug. I like that it's pretty small. If you have this on top of your desk, it makes it easy to hide this away. It doesn't, you know, it's not a huge power brick that's gonna take up a lot of space. The other benefit of this too is because 
kind of gives you an indication because it has such a small thing. This guy is pretty power efficient, which is nice for, for a device that's kind of designed to be on all the time. Let's get a closer look at these drives. These are SK Hynix, uh, 4-ish terabyte, you know, 3.84 terabyte, E1.S drives. This is enterprise storage, which is kind of unique in this segment. Usually you would find like an M.2 or a SATA. So it's very cool to see something that's more typically found in really high-end data center. Uh, so these two screws here, this plastic part is the only thing you'll get from QNAP. This just screws right onto the actual drive. This heatsink is obviously part of the drive. When it ships, it does ship with M.2 adapters. Uh, I don't have them here, but I will insert some B-roll of them. The benefit there, of course, is you can start with, you know, more common, less expensive commodity M.2 drives, and then upgrade to, in the future to a drive like this. EDSFF in general is kind of where the market is going, at least in terms of high-end flash. Uh, not that M.2 is dead by any means. I don't think we're going to be getting this form factor on the consumer side for quite a while, but as far as enterprise goes, this is where it's headed. While I wasn't sent the box from our headquarters in Cincinnati, what does come with it is, of course, the NAS, these drive sleds with the M.2 adapters. It's nice that those are included. Power adapter, cable, some documentation. Unfortunately, and this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine personally, it doesn't include a Thunderbolt cable, which seems kind of silly for something that costs as much as this does, um, which I'll talk about later. It's actually not terribly expensive for what it is, but I really would love to see Thunderbolt cables included, especially if it's being marketed as a Thunderbolt NAS. Those are common enough, especially if you work in the entertainment industry, you probably have a pile of them, but it would still would have been nice to include. Now, let's talk about performance. So I did two batches of tests for this. One was on macOS using Thunderbolt and the other was on Windows using Thunderbolt and 10 gig. The Thunderbolt connection actually creates a Thunderbolt network bridge that operates at 20 gigabits a second, which is different than a Thunderbolt DAS or Thunderbolt external device that operates at 40 gig. This is pretty standard for Thunderbolt NASs and other Thunderbolt devices that operate as a Thunderbolt network. Starting with the 10 gig, to absolutely nobody's surprise, this NAS totally saturates a 10 gig connection. The reads seem a little low than you would expect, you know, not fully, fully saturating, but I think in everyday performance, you're not really gonna notice that. And that was most likely just run to run variation kind of thing. This next test is the QNAP on a Windows machine with Thunderbolt. The performance is a little lackluster, if I'm honest. Blackmagic is not the ideal disk speed test for this kind of thing, since it's only single threaded and it's not a huge Q depth, but the performance on Windows is still a little bit underwhelming. I got similar performance on my MacBook, also over Thunderbolt, and same thing on a Mac Mini, also over Thunderbolt. But if we look at Addo Disk Benchmark on macOS, with a cube depth of eight and four streams, we fully saturate the 20 gigabit connection that the Thunderbolt network makes. This particular test, we got almost 2,000 megabytes a second. Uh, there were other runs, I did this a couple times, there were other runs that went over 2,000 megabytes a second, which is great to see, but this is just about as fast as you're going to get it uh, sequentially, and the random IOPs are pretty good too. You're going to get more than enough performance out of this for what this NAS was designed for. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this. It's nice to have an all flash-based NAS in such a small form factor. If you have Windows, like I said before, it's kind of unfortunate. I wouldn't really look for something like this as the Thunderbolt aspect of it is kind of, you know, it's kind of, you're paying for stuff you're not gonna use essentially. QNIP has a bunch of other really great NASs that have 10 gig built in, some even all flash based. That said, it's still a pretty good system. And if you have plans to switch to Mac OS or if you have an interchangeable workflow, uh, you can certainly use the Thunderbolt on Mac OS with great effect, or if you have a QNAP Thunderbolt NAS already. This is a great addition to that. The performance overall is pretty good, uh, especially if you're on Mac OS. You know, there was some concern that the interface is only PCIe Gen 3x2, but even though it limits these drives a lot, you know, these are Gen 4, sometimes Gen 5 parts that can be really, really insanely fast and designed for like hyperscale applications, you're not going to be able to pull that much data out of this anyway. And each individual drive gets about 1.5 gigabytes per second. So in aggregate, in a RAID configuration, there is plenty of bandwidth, even though they're only Gen 3 by 2. And that's more of a limitation of the uh, CPU and the chipset than anything else. Some minor concerns that aren't really deal breaking is it's a little bit loud, especially if you're going to leave it on your desk, you'll definitely hear it. 
Uh, if you leave it under your desk, you probably won't hear it, which is pretty nice. And like I showed you before, the you know, power supply is pretty small. You can hide it away. And E1.S drives are not easy to get right now, but like I said, it comes with M.2 adapters out of the box. Overall, like I said, this is a great little device. I think it's something you should definitely look into if this will fit into your workflow. Uh, some, something fast, something with low latency, something that will be good for portability and for on the go editing, especially if you know, you're know you going to events or shows or something. This is a great thing to bring with you that's portable and can offer a good amount of storage. The full review will be down in the description as well as links to our Discord where you can get involved with us, come chat, hang out, and uh, stay tuned for more.